Right, well, um, first of all, um, thanks for talking to the full toss, Simon. Um, it, it's absolutely brilliant to speak to an Ashes hero. Um, you know, it's a real privilege to, to have you with us. Um, and I've got a few questions for you about your book and about the 2005 Ashes. And then I'm going to hopefully grill you for your predictions for the, for the upcoming Ashes this year. Oh, OK. OK. Um, first of all, um, you call your book The Test um, because, yeah. because a lot of it deals with injuries and the physical and emotional pain that these caused you. Um, mm. Was it being part of that amazing 2005 Ashes series that made it all worthwhile? Oh, hugely. Uh, I've, I've been asked many a time, you know, would I rather have played 80, 80 tests or the 18 that I played and, and to be involved in the 2005 Ashes? And I take the 2005 Ashes every time. Uh, you know, to, to play against, for me, what is the, the best test team that's ever played the game, Australia? Uh, that tie they had was unbelievable. Yeah. But to, to, to play the, the brand of cricket we played and, and beat them, um, you know, you, you can't bet at that. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm happy with what I achieved. Yes, it was frustrating at times with my injuries. I'll very frustrated, but, you know, that's life you have to move on. Excellent. That's no, good to hear. I mean, the the book does talk graphically about the, the ups and the downs um, and also the uncertainties of being a professional cricketer. I mean, would yeah. you like your would you like your two sons to, two sons to follow in your footsteps? Oh, look, um, I'd love them to follow my footsteps. Of course I would. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, they're, they're going to make their own ways in life. Um, they've got to find out what they really love doing. And, and if they do that, then as long as they're passionate about whatever they do and they put their, their whole heartedness into it, I'm happy. Um, I'd yeah. love them to play cricket, of course I would. Uh, it's a tough game, especially being a fast bowler. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to deal with the ups and downs, you have to deal with uh, form, you have to deal with injuries, you have to deal with, you know, bowling against one of the best batters in the world. But um, for me, cricket's a, an amazing game and if they want to get involved, I love it. Yeah, cr- cricket is a, a brilliant game. I'm not going to disagree with you there. Test cricket is the uh, is definitely the pinnacle, I think, as far as our readers yeah. are concerned. Yeah, um, you mentioned that being in the England side is is a little like li- little like being in a bubble, um, and that this eventually takes its toll, and that lots of players are kind of frazzled and burned out by the end of their careers. Um, what, what do you think the ECB can do to to help matters? Is is it just simply a matter of playing less games? Do you think they play too much? I don't think they play too much. Um, no, at, at the end of the day, that's why they brought in the, the central contract system and yeah. the incremental contract to to help look after these lads. Um, they're under immense pressure all the time um, to, to play that level and um, and perform day in day out uh, at that test level is, is very tough. But that's why they get paid the big bucks as well. Yeah. So yeah. you know. <laughs> With the uh, with the rough comes the smooth. So yeah, it's just one of those things you have to take into consideration, um, and you have to work out whether you want to do it or not. But let mm. me test cricket for England um, as a as a British British person is you know is, is the highest that highest accolade you, you can do. So um, to to play the game you love and get paid at the same time, I'm sorry, there's there's no better job in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Hard work, but worth it. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So just um, looking back at the, the 2005 Ashes, um, mm. what do you think made the that England side so good? Because a lot of us feel like it was probably better than the side that we had um, in 2010-11 when we won the Ashes in Australia. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it was necessarily better, but I think a lot of our, a lot of our readers kind of feel that 2005 side had something special. Um, do, do you think it was maybe the sense of togetherness or, or just pure talent? Um, you know, what made that side so special? I think we've been together as a side for three, three or four years. Very balanced team. Um, every base was covered in terms of, of what you needed to, to be a good side. Um, but we had this, this feeling of togetherness, uh, almost like a, we were like a family, really. Uh, yeah. it, you know, the changing room was was one where you felt comfortable, you felt safe, um, and you enjoyed being in it, which was the main thing. Um, it was never a chore going into that changing room. There was never any issues, no egos. Um, the lads just enjoyed being around each other. Excellent. So when it, when it came to, to playing in the games, you know, we, we had each other's backs. 
Um, and we have so much talent in our side that we knew each day, whether it be a tough day or a good day, um, someone is always going to put their hand up and form. Excellent. Um, and that would have been quite useful, I suppose, after Lords, because my, my, my next question was going to be, you know, there's this big Ashes build-up, and then, of course, England got stuffed in the first test. Um, and, you know, what was morale like after that game? What, what kind of things were you saying to each other in the dressing room? Vaughan, he was brilliant. He just said, look, lads, this has happened. We start again at Ed's Baston this series. Start again at Ed's Baston. Um, we forget what happened here. You know, at the end of the day, we were bowled out by Glenn McGrath, the, mm. one of the best bowlers that's ever played the game. Yeah. It's going to happen. Uh, he loves playing at Laws anyway. Um, so, yeah, it was just, we were just realistic. Um, you know, he's allowed to bowl well, which he did. He bowled out of his skin. Yeah, uh, as, he, as he has done for many, many years. Um, so yeah, we were just realistic, realised that these things happen, and you know we're a very, very good team. We've beaten everyone else in the world. Yeah, let's not let's not let one test match loss um, affect us, and we just moved on, and we just were as positive as we possibly could. That's good. It, it sounds like um, the, the players had more faith in the fans. I have to say, myself, after watching Lords, I was thinking, oh, here we go again. So it's, it's brilliant to hear there was such resilience, actually, in the dressing room. Um, I mean, the, the next question I was going to ask is, at what point in that series did you think, we've, we've got these Aussies now, you know, we can beat them? When, when, did, you, when did you actually think that this is it, we're going to do it? Um, probably uh, Old Trafford, I reckon. Yeah. Um, you know, we we came back and won that game at Edgebaston, you know, by the skin of our teeth, basically. Yeah. You know, if, if they'd won it there, then, you know, the series is over. Um, you know, 2 0 down, you're not going to come back from that. Um, yeah. Because weather, weather was always going to play a part. But the biggest thing for me was was Old Trafford. Um, when yeah. you could see this team of legends jumping up and down on the, on the balcony, celebrating the draw. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, you've never ever seen the Aussies do that before. So yeah, to um, to see them celebrating like that was yeah, it was it was something that we thought right, we got these lads now because they have to respect us. Um, and yeah, we we were just delighted with the way we were playing. You bet. You mentioned in your book that there was a, a good spirit between the two sides in that series, and that the Aussies yeah. would would come into the dressing room for a drink afterwards. Did you get that sense when they came in to socialise that you'd earned their respect then as well? Maybe there was less Mickey taking, or I don't know. Um, the, the biggest thing for me was the series was such an intense affair, but there wasn't any time for anything else. We were just catching up for a beer after the game and just reflecting on what had been. You know, another amazing test match. Um, it was just down to pure, um, pure respect for each other. And just sitting down and thinking, Christ, you know, what's happened there? Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, yeah, it was just one of those situations where you just have to appreciate appreciate each other. And yeah. Appreciate each other's talents and, and just appreciate the, the, the immense series that we were, we were caught up in. Yeah, I mean, it must be amazing to kind of look back and reflect on now. Are you still in, in touch with most of your teammates from 2005? Uh, are, you, are you still close? Yeah, definitely. And the strange thing is, I might not see the lads for a couple of years, but then when we catch up, it feels as if we've never been apart. Yeah. Um, it's a unique um, environment that we were in. Um, I think, you know, after going through that series, you have to just realise that we were part of something truly special and yeah. yeah we just really appreciate each other and you know we have to be strong to get through that series um, so whenever we catch up it's this yeah it's almost like as I said earlier family um, yeah you know, we, you know we were part of something totally unique um, first time it had happened in 18 years and um, yeah it was just a special special feeling yeah so um, just moving on to the to the upcoming Ashes Get your crystal ball out. What what do you think is going to happen? What what's your prediction? Can we win? I think it's going to be a lot closer than I I initially thought. I watched the the West Indian series and I was like, oh dear, here we go. This is going to be a tough, long, hard summer. Yeah. But but the way the boys have played against New Zealand, um, especially in the Test series, it was it was immense. It was a brilliant series. Uh, played within the right spirit of the game. Played with massive intensity. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it was a real test at times with regards to the pace of the game and, and players having to put their hands up like Ben Stokes or Lord, you know, he, he won England that game with that, that energy play. Definitely. Um, mm. And it's obviously the momentum we've taken into the one-day series, you know, the lads are playing with a smile on their face again, they're playing with the intensity, they're playing with freedom and they're, they're expressing themselves, which is what we need to do against the Aussies. So, uh, predictions as they go with this series, I think it's going to be close and I think it just depends on uh, who's the most daring yeah. Who was the bravest, and who was in there with the right right attitude, and uh, who aren't afraid to lose? Yeah, yeah. And I think as well, you mentioned Ben Stokes there. I mean, the the thing that I like so much about Stokes is that he kind of brings a balance to the England team where we can play five bowlers. And for me, that's yeah. why I love the 2005 side so much, having mm. having Flint off there, um, batting at six and being yeah. a, a genuine wicket taker as well um, with the ball it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, do you see similarities between the, the 2005 attack that you were you played such a, an important role in. Do you see similarities between that attack and, and the attack we've got now with, with maybe Anderson with a swing in the Hoggard role and then Wood bringing a little bit of pace like yourself? Yeah, I, I think that the attack is looking very balanced. Um, you know, there's, there's huge options there with, with any given situation, really. Um, we have, I think in the West Indies, if you look at it, it's quite a tiny attack. Yeah. With not many options, whereas now we've got Mark Wood coming in. Yeah. Um, and Stokes is rather super aggressive. Yeah. And then Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Um, Broad is looking as if he's going back to his best. So, yeah, the, the signs are very promising and yeah, what could be a, a very good bowling unit. Well, I, I hope you're right. Yeah, it'd be fantastic if we could get another close series. That would be brilliant. Um, you know, I, I just hope that England are competitive myself and then, you know, if we, if we can sneak it, momentum's a funny thing and if we get on a roll and the, the Aussies start to worry, who, who knows, I suppose. Um, yeah, you know, we, the way these young lads have come in, um, they've, you know, rejuvenated this, this, this team. Um, we've got a great blend of youth and experience. Um, so, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to seeing what the boys can do. Um, you know, we've got um, Trevor Bayless come back, uh, coming over now. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how we, you know, he's just got to get used to the team. He's got to get to know them. Um, and then we'll just uh, go from there. And I'm sure he's going to do a great job. Do you think it's going to be a, a bit strange having an Australian head coach? Or, or is that something that doesn't bother you at all? Doesn't bother me one bit. Um, you know, it might bother the Aussies because he knows them all inside out. Um, yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, he's, he's come over, he's taken a job, he's obviously uh, got an impeccable record. Uh, he's got great success in the short form of the game. Um, and I'm sure he's going to do a great job. And I, I hear that he keeps thinking basic, yeah. uh, which is what's needed. You know, it's test match cricket. These guys are a bloody good cricketers. So, yeah. you know, there's no job justification involved. Um, you know, he's just going to be there to facilitate and, and help out when he can. Yeah, um, and I think that's that's the the role of a coach. Um, you just have to facilitate, and make sure people are prepared. Excellent. Uh, Simon, the next the next question I've I've got for you is a bit more of a. Uh, I suppose a, contra- a controversial one. I wanted to speak to you about your friend um, Kevin Peterson because yeah. we, we've been we've been very supportive of KP generally on our blog, um, as we've been trying to kind of um, work out um, work out exactly why he's not playing anymore. I mean, um, you say in your book that in many ways he's misunderstood by the public and the media. Um, yeah. c- could you elaborate on that? What, what exactly do you mean by that? I, I understand Kevin. I really do. Um, you know, he can come across as arrogant and selfish and, and, and you know, all these words are, are branded whenever you mention his name. But he's just, you know, very one, you know, very kind of uh, focused, um, very driven, and he wants to be the best that he can be. Now, if that's a fault, then I'm sorry, that's it's just wrong. Um, I get on with him very, very well. He um, He's always respected me, I've always respected him. Um, but the one thing is, he'll always speak his mind, and, and some people don't like that. Yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this isn't under 15s cricket. This is, you know, this, this is men's um, men's cricket, and you're gonna get clashes of personalities in a team. Of course, you are. Um, that's life. You know, we get you get clashes of personality in, in any walk of life. Um, 
but you know, Andrew Strauss is a good friend of mine. Yeah. And, um, you know, I got along with the pair of them really well. And Strauss, he's come in, he's had to make a big decision. He's been very strong. You know, he got rid of Peter Morse as well. And, you know, he's, he's put this KP issue to bed. So, yeah. he's done a great job. Um, in the sense that the team now can move on without worrying about um, is Kev coming back or is he not. Yeah. Um, so, he's helped the team focus on, on the job in hand and, and, and kind of, yeah, done what was needed. But, yeah, disappointed for Kev. But, you know, um, that's one of those things that, that needed to be done. Do you think it's more um, problems with the board or, or with the dressing room as well? What, what's your what's your instinct on that? Um, well, obviously there's, there's been a lot of water passed under the bridge. Um, you know, I, I don't think Kevin's book helped him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. By any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, he, he had a gag in order to put in him for a year, so a lot of the frustration was being built up, um, rightly or wrongly. Um, from comments that were being made about him. Um, and so honestly, they all came out at once. Um, so, yeah, he, you have to see it from both points of view, really. Kevin's totally frustrated, and the ECB obviously don't like what Kevin said, um, which is going to cause issues. Excellent. Well, you, you mentioned there that you're, you're good friends with Andrew Strauss um, too. My, my final question really is just, um, do you now think that, um, I mean, Peter Moores has gone, um, Paul Downton's gone. Do you think now with Bayliss coming in and with Strauss overseeing things, do you think that English cricket's now in the right hands, uh, you know, the right people to take the team forward? I think it's in a very exciting place. I really do. Um, the last playing was fine, I face again. Yeah. So we're just really enjoying the cricket. Um, yeah, I think English cricket is looking really, really good. Um, we've got a lot of young lads coming through, which is essential if you want to progress. Um, so, yeah, I think they're in a great place. Strauss, he's um, done a great job so far. You know, he's got his ideas on, on what needs to be done. So, yeah, I think they're in a very good place. We've got a lot of youth coming through, a lot of lads who um, are going to progress and um, become legends of the game. So, yeah. Excellent. Uh, it's, it's good to finish on a positive note. Um, it, it's certainly the performances in the one-day series were were excellent and a real breath of fresh air. So yeah, let's just hope it carries through to the Ashes. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, these boys are just going to yeah still carry on playing the way they do, and I think what we need to do is you know realise that these young lads are going to have days where things don't go right. Uh, I'm playing with this this brand of cricket. Things will happen. Um, you know, let's, let's keep on backing them and, and, and encouraging them to express themselves and play the game the right way. Excellent. Well, well thanks a lot for talking to us, Simon. R- really, really appreciate it. It's good to have your thoughts on all those things. And, um, yeah, um, good luck. Are you going to be playing any cricket yourself? Uh, I'll do some, like, charity games and, and PTA stuff. So, yeah, I'll be turning my arm more gently, but I think you'll do it. Yeah, tr- try not to kill too many people. Um, reading, your, <laughs> reading your book, it sounds like you were pretty hostile in your youth. So, uh, yeah, anyway. I, yeah, I try my best. Excellent. Well, thanks very much, Simon. Um, thanks Sorry. for talking to the Full Toss.